Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. Friends, we are gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we acknowledge the life of Bob Dallin. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace, that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow hope, in death resurrection. Dying Christ destroyed our death, and rising Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory. In baptism, Bob put on Christ, and so in Christ may Bob be clothed with glory. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed, but we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ is pure. Friends, my name is Jesse Rook. I'm one of the pastors here and. Uh, along with Pastor Anna, we will be presiding over Bob's service today to publicly mourn, to, to join as a family and as a community to, to mourn Bob's death, to celebrate Bob's life, and to bear witness to all that God is doing and did through, God, through Bob. I'll invite Anna to come and pray. Let us pray. O oh God, who gave us birth, you are ever more ready to hear than we are to pray. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Give to us now your grace, that as we shrink before the mystery of death, we may see the light of eternity. Speak to us once more your solemn message of life and of death. Help us to live as those who are prepared to die. And when our days are over, here are accomplished, enable us to die as those who go forth to live. So that living or dying, our life may be in you. And that nothing in life or in death will be able to separate us from your great love. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Listen to the word of God from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 10. But God is so rich in mercy, and he loves us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. And it is only by God's grace that you have been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and, is seated, uh, and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Jesus Christ. So God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness toward us, as shown in all he has done for us, who are united with Christ Jesus. God saved you by his grace when you believed, and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is, salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Now hear the 23rd Psalm. If you know it, you can say it along with me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. 
Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The gospel reading today comes from the book of Luke, chapter 12. Jesus said, this is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food to eat or enough clothes to wear, for life is more than food and your body is more than clothing. Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or, stood or store food in barns. Instead, God feeds them. And you are far more valuable to him than any birds. Can all of your worries add a single moment to your life? And if worry can't accomplish a little thing like that, what's the use of worrying over bigger things? Look at the lilies and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing Yet Solomon in all of his wisdom was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for flowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? Don't be concerned about what to eat and what to drink. Don't worry about such things. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers all over the world. But your father already knows your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and he will give you everything you need. So don't be afraid, little flock, for it, it, for it gives your father great happiness to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to those in need. This will store up treasure for you in heaven. And the purses of heaven never get old or develop holes. Your treasure will be safe. No thief can steal it. No moth can destroy it. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. Amen. You know, I've been trying to think about a story about, of Bob to share, and there are just so many. I almost told the story of how I thought he stole $100 from me. I wanted to tell the story of how he'd fall asleep with the Bible on his lap, waiting for Zoom Bible study to begin, and then miss it because he slept through it, which happened more than a few times. As I was watching the slideshow that was coming on earlier, I, I saw a picture of Bob and my dog, Kevin. And I used to bring Kevin into the office and when Kevin came in, he'd be so excited and happy and would always ask me, Bob, not Kevin, how much more often could I bring Kevin into the office? One of my favorite memories is when Bob would eat those peanut butter filled pretzels and Kevin would sit and stare at Bob, willing him to sneak him one. Of course, later I'd find out that Bob wasn't just sneaking the pretzels to Kevin. It was more of a one for Kevin, one for Bob, one for Kevin, one for Bob type of situation. No wonder Kevin loved Bob so much. But that was Bob. Kind and loving and funny. He was a friend and a, a colleague. He, he was deeply devoted to God and deeply devoted to his church. A deeply devotional man. By some estimates, he would spend up to two hours every day in devotion. One of his favorites that he was always talking about was a book by Sarah Young called Jesus Calling. And this week, as I was preparing for this service, I found my copy, because it turns out it was buried somewhere, and I looked at two different dates. The first was his birthday, which was this past week on Wednesday November 6th. Bob would have been 77. And one of the scriptures we read today came from Bob's birthday. 
The other date that I looked at was September 19th, the day that Bob passed. I want to read the devotional for that day. There is a mighty battle going on for control of your mind. Heaven and earth intersect in your mind. The tugs of both spheres influence your thinking. I created you with the capacity to experience the four tastes of heaven. When you shut out the world and focus on my presence, you can enjoy sitting with me in heavenly realms. This is an incredible privilege, reserved for precious ones who belong to me and seek my faith. Your greatest strength is your desire to spend time communing with me. As you concentrate on me, my spirit fills your mind with life and peace. The world exerts a downward pull on your thoughts. Media bombard you with greed and lust and cynicism. When you face these things, pray for protection and discernment. Stay in continual communication with me whenever you walk through the wastelands of this world. Refuse to worry, because this form of worldliness will weigh you down and block awareness of my presence. Stay alert, recognizing the battle being waged against your mind. Look forward to an eternity of strife-free living restored for you in heaven. Look forward to an eternity of strife-free living reserved for you in heaven. At the bottom of that devotion was the scripture that Pastor Anna read from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. God is so rich in mercy. God loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, we were given life when God raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. For God raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us in the heavenly realms with him because you are united with Christ Jesus. I can't think of a better text to meditate on for Bob's service his love of God, his love of the Bible, his love of learning and spending so much time in devotions. And like this devotion said, as we concentrate on Jesus, he fills our minds with life and with peace. And that was Bob, a man whose life was filled, a man whose mind was filled with life and peace and with love and with joy. He was Uncle Bob to many of our students, a a regular office volunteer helping us fold bulletins and drink coffee and give Kevin pretzels and propose all kinds of solutions to many of the world's ailments. He chaired our trustees and worked so long on the building project to renovate our sanctuary. He attended Bible studies and Sunday schools and small groups. He, He soaked up so much biblical knowledge that he would ask these deeply spiritual questions and would make a simple pastor like me scratch his head more than a few times. Paul writes that Bob and each and every one of us have been saved by God's grace. We are saved by God's grace when we believe. And this is a gift from God. Not a reward, but evidence that we are God's masterpiece. God's masterpiece. God's love is so rich and so encompassing and so relentless that God's love chases after each and every one of us throughout our lives. We are created anew in Christ Jesus for lives of good works. And that was Bob. Created for a life of good works. He'll be missed. Amen. I've been asked to um, share some memories I have with Bob. And I'll tell you, there are so many. And like Pastor Jesse said, he was a faithful man. But one of the things I love the most about Bob is that he was a faithful son. 
before his mother passed, he went every week to, drove a few hours to go see his mom, help her count out her pills for the week, and um, get her the groceries she needed, made sure she was taken care of. He was so faithful and loving to her. And one time I had the privilege of going with him to see his mother. It was his joy to take me to his old stomping grounds. We drove by his old house. He told me stories, and then I met his mother. Now I know how he became such a lovely man. She was dear, and the two of them were kind of funny together. They were a little bit like, mm, but, <laughs> but he loved her, and he was so faithful to her. And I really admired that because though I know he was a faithful man to our Lord, that showed in his love for his mother. And that's huge. That's huge. Another thing that I remember that I loved the most, I remember with a lot of smiles, <clears throat> one Easter sermon, I shared a story of my son Jeff when he was four years old. <clears throat> He's now 28. But when he was four... Um, it was Palm Sunday. It was children's message. And we talked about how we're going to remember Jesus' last days on the earth. And what are we going to remember on Good Friday? And one of the children said, well, Jesus died on the cross. Up stands my son, Jeff. He says this. But did he stay dead? No, he arose from the grave, and he went to heaven, and when we get there, he will say, welcome to your new home. Bob thought that was hilarious. He was laughing in the choir seats on that Easter Sunday, and so from that point on, it's probably about two years before I left, Bob loved to say, he arose from the grave. <laughs> in his little tenor voice, Bob would say that, and I love it. And so when I heard that Bob had passed, I was so sad, I was so sad. But I also remembered him and how he loved that story and how Jesus welcomed him and said, welcome to your new home. And that's where he is, and that's a joy. And I'm thrilled to have that image in my mind. At this time, I'm going to invite anyone forward who has something to share, a memory or um, something wonderful to share about their friend Bob. Does anyone have something to say? <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, some of you knew him as Bob. Some of you knew him as Mr. Dallin, possibly. Uh, he was just Uncle Bob to me and our family. Uh, my father and him had become best friends when they were 19. Um, they shared uh, the same birthday month, so we were always able to celebrate both their birthdays around Thanksgiving. Um, and as I kept thinking, I knew there would be a point where somebody could say, hey, anybody want to talk? I was trying to map it out in my head, and at one point I got sad thinking, like, you know, both of my younger sisters had children recently, and he wasn't getting a chance to see them. But then it hit me, as you were saying, Uncle Bob was always full of happiness and joy. Um, it didn't matter what was going on. Uh, you could always count on him for some positivity. Um, he is somebody that had been always in my life since I have a memory, and he just really loved this church and all of you in it. Um, the only other thing that came close is, I don't know anybody that might be here from NFL Films, um, he loved his time there. But when that ended, he really blossomed into being here. And that became his conversation piece. So we know, as you said, <laughs> he's up there and he's with his mom and welcomed. And he didn't die alone. That was the thing that bothered me. The idea that he was in his apartment alone without a physical presence had me upset. But he wasn't alone in his mind or in his heart. And that came from the foundation he got here as well. So I can't thank you guys enough. Um, I can't thank his cousins because unfortunately we are not blood related. 
um, I couldn't help but thank you guys so much for being there and helping go through all the steps that had to be done. Uh, that's just amazing. But um, Uncle Bob was somebody that loved a good joke. Uh, he was somebody that loved to laugh, and you could just always count on him. And he'll, he'll be missed by a lot of people. But don't be sad about it, because he wouldn't want you to be. He definitely wouldn't want you to be. Is there anyone else who would like to share? There are so many stories, as uh, it's already been said. And as I'm revisiting what I want to say, I put, I've left this out, I've left that out, I've left the other thing out. But I'm going to highlight a few things. Bob was a quiet man, a gentle soul, and his love of the Lord was evident. He was always there when any one of us here needed anything. When there was a need, he was there. And believe me, through the years, there were plenty and plenty of needs. And Bob was always there. I met Bob in 1999 when he joined our church family. I knew his name, but I really didn't know him. One day, I came to realize that he had quietly wheedled his way right into my heart. Before I knew it, he was someone I could depend on, a friend and a brother in Christ. Our times spent in the church office, I am the church administrator, so <laughs> failed to tell that. Um, our time spent in the church office were always a joy. He and Barbara Perry and Joan Flack, well, they would chat while they were folding bulletins or any other task that needed to be done, which they always performed very graciously. Then it was snack time. And let me tell you, they love their snacks. <laughs> So out would come donuts. Usually, they were, one of them would bring them in. A lot of times, it was Bob that brought them in. And Bob would get our coffee and then start sharing funny videos on his phone. And we would all have a great laugh. There was always a twinkle in his eye when he would do that. He, at times, would show us uh, or bring in his new minted coin. And he always was so proud to share that with us. Look what I got. It came in the mail today. So he would tell us about that. Or he would tell us about the great, big, huge bag of broccoli that he got. And he was so excited that he was going to eat broccoli all week. Fresh broccoli from Produce Junction just made his day. Then there was birthday celebrations and Christmas. We exchanged a few gifts. Bob's usually came from QVC. He loved QVC. <laughs> and we would celebrate with each other. Of course, we always included our pastors. One year during Christmas time, Bob had his back to me for the longest time. And I couldn't figure out what he was doing. When he turned around, he had the funniest grin on his face, along with a great, big, huge, red Rudolph nose. And it was hysterical. He wore it the rest of the day. It's a memory never to be forgotten. Thursdays are a little harder now, but I know he is much happier being with the Lord. One other story I wanted to highlight was that Bob's favorite hymn was Victory in Jesus. And without knowing it, Casey, our choir director, our music director, had picked that song to sing the Sunday after Bob passed. And it was amazing. I was awed because it felt just like God was telling all of us that Bob was with him in glory. Rest in peace, Bob. You will be missed, but your memory will live on in our hearts. Thank you. Anybody else? 
Yes. All right, shout it out, girl. Bob was such a dear friend, and I must say, as an older lady who is not familiar with computers and new phones, I don't know how many calls he got from me to explain things on my computer or to whatever. He was always so helpful that way. He was just a wonderful man, and we will miss him very much, but uh, this service has just helped with making it a little bit easier. Bob and I counted money for the church many years ago. Eight years. All of a sudden, one Sunday, we're counting, and he slammed his hand down on the table and said, we're resigning. <laughs> and I said, I am? And he said, we've had enough. And he resigned us. And we saw every good movie that ever came to Marlton. And I really expected Applebee's to go under when we got <laughs> stopped going because he loved Applebee's. I brought my picture that Bob gave me of the laughing Jesus. I'm sure he gave it to other people too, but uh, someone wrote a poem about Jesus laughing, and he just thought that was great because he liked to think of Bob, of Jesus, even though he knew he was going to the cross, that he was happy during his life and enjoyed laughing with the disciples and I think that was a great idea too and uh, Bob shared that with me and I'm, sh I'm going to miss him sorely. Anybody else? Okay, Pastor Jesse. One last story is the uh, candles that are on the Lord's table. Uh, Bob was the one who replaced them when they got too short. And all year that Bob has been sick, they keep getting shorter and shorter and shorter because nobody's been replacing them every, every month. And I was preparing the Lord's table for communion and getting everything ready this week, and I kept looking at these little stubby candles going, man, Bob would want them replaced. But as one last memory for Bob, we'll, we'll keep them as short as we can until somebody else gets the bug to, to replace them. Let us pray. God of us all, your love never ends. When all else fails, you are still God. 
We pray to you and for one another in our need and for all anywhere who mourn with us this day. To those who doubt, give light. To those who are weak, strength. To all who have sinned, mercy. To all who sorrow, your peace. Keep true in us the love with which we hold one another. In all your ways, we trust you. And to you, with your church on earth and in heaven, we offer honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Friends, as we uh, close out our service with a with the blessing, you're invited to a, a brief repast or kind of snack over to your right, um, right after this service. Bear witness to the love of God in this world, so that those to whom love is a stranger may find in you generous friends. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.